I faced an incredibly deeply conflicted decision recently. And upon making the decision, one of my children asked me, my oldest son, Dad, is it well with your soul? And I said, my soul is well, because I deeply believe that this is God's purpose for my life. But my head is confused and my heart is breaking. Let me tell you about that decision. August the 1st, next weekend, will mark for me 20 years of pastoral ministry at Foothills Alliance Church. Truly one of the grandest privileges and blessings of my life. August the 15th, two weeks after that, will mark the last time that I will stand here as your lead pastor. I hope I'll be back many times after that, but not as the lead pastor of Foothills Church. Shockingly to me and very unexpected, and I can hardly believe I'm saying this to you right now, I submitted my resignation to the elders board last week. Let me tell you the story. Three weeks ago, all that I could think about were the challenges and the blessings of leading our church through what we hope is a re-entry, full process out of this pandemic's gutting influence that we've gone through in the last 18 months. COVID was certainly challenging, certainly created a weariness of soul for probably all of us to some degree. The loss of my mother a month ago was obviously an overwhelming emotional mountain for me to climb, but God and you were so faithful and kind and gracious. Three or four weeks ago, there was an election in Ontario to choose a district superintendent for that district in our Alliance family. Um, it's a district kind of south of Toronto and west of Toronto that comprises about 70 Alliance churches. A dear friend of mine was nominated to be the district superintendent there, and I was excited for him. Another local pastor also added his name to the ballot. And then the kind of unthinkable happened that I still don't fully understand for reasons that I don't get. A third name was added to the ballot, and that was the trusted name of none of the above. <laughs> As the election proceeded, my friend received 46.8% of the vote. Another pastor received 32.4% of the vote. And our old trusted friend, none of the above, received 20.9% of the vote. In order to be elected by an alliance, by our alliance constitutional protocols, the candidate needs to receive 50% plus one of the votes cast. So the election was declared null and void. In that kind of situation, which I've never heard of before, our president, David Hearn, is tasked with the responsibility of appointing an individual to serve as district superintendent for a two-year term until the next district conference, they happen every two years in our districts, where churches will gather together again and they'll go through the whole process and then choose a new leader. I was aware of the unusual circumstance. It's on a text train with my DS and a couple friends and we we're lamenting the results the complexity of life in that district. I was feeling badly for my friend. And then something happened that I never saw coming. I had this internal prompting, I believe of the Holy Spirit, that the president was going to ask me to serve a two-year term as district superintendent for this district of churches in Ontario. I shared that prompting with Joyce and fully expected to hear her say, well, isn't that great? I'm sure going to miss you here in Calgary. <laughs> and while her reaction was fairly muted, it wasn't a total, have you completely lost your mind kind of reaction. That came later in the process. The president did call me. I'd been asked before about district responsibilities, but never felt a prompting to act. I told him something happened, and I asked him to pray much before making the decision. Other great candidates emerged. I silently hoped he would choose one of them over me. The whole possibility seemed overwhelming. I mean, think about it. My mother has just died. My father is very, very frail. Joyce has a great job here that she loves. I love this church with all of my heart. I have the best elders board ever. I love our staff. My third grandchild's coming 
in September. I'm fairly fond of my grandkids, in case you haven't heard that. I've made a personal vow to never live east of the Calgary city limits. Um, financially, this makes no sense. Emily's just moved home from Ontario. She just got an incredible job offer. Our whole family is living in the city at the same time for the first time in years. To say this has felt like a storm is a bit of an understatement. But I have to say, I have deeply sensed God's presence and leading and assurances in the midst of the storm. Logically, it makes no sense. It's nonsense. But I heard the whisper of God. And if I've learned one thing in my years on this planet, it never goes well to minimize his voice in our lives. The district there is vulnerable. It's in Ontario. (laughs) I hope nobody is listening from there. Their past leaders have done some really, really good things, but there's also been struggles. My predecessor resigned halfway through his term. Uh, The assistant is moving to Alberta. Smart man. It appears that there are more churches there that are closing than opening. There are other churches that are facing massive challenges right now. And it appears that they need a shepherding leader who will love and listen and then lead. And the key voices and leaders in my life have affirmed that they believe that God is in this and that I'm to do this. I've always believed that to a certain extent, the call of the denomination is the call of God in my life. I trust my leaders deeply. So I am moving to Burlington, Ontario on August the 22nd to serve a two-year appointment as, get this, the District Superintendent of the Central Canadian District of the Christian Missionary Alliance in Canada. How's that for a title? And not only that, there's a nursing home attached to this district. So this is where you get ready to laugh. Apparently, I'm about to become the president of a nursing home as well. I'll be responsible to serve and care for some 70 churches in that region. I talked to their staff after accepting this appointment, after resigning here about the elephants in the room, to use that phrase again. I'm a Western guy. I've lived here all my life, born and raised in Calgary. I assured them, though, that I have roots in the East, that my family is all from the East. I have 12 cousins in life, and 11 of them live in the East. Second elephant is I've never been a superintendent before, but I assured them that Brent Trask had never been a superintendent before he took this job. And quite frankly, virtually every district superintendent in our family has never been a superintendent before taking the job. I assured them that two of my best friends on the planet are currently, or have recently been superintendents, and are both on my speed dial. Will talk me off ledges daily, I hope. The third elephant, I said, you didn't choose me. You get stuck with me. And I promise you that I'll do my best to prove that the president is not unkind or incompetent and knew what he was doing. So we are moving, first me and eventually Joyce. It's gonna be a bit of a hybrid approach. I'll be there for a few weeks. I'll come home for a few weeks and do that through at least the next four to six months as we try to figure out our life here. We are going to rent our home, ironically, to Jeremy and Becky Campbell, who just lost theirs. I called her Monday and said, how can we pray? And she said, we need to rent a house. And I thought to myself, really? And she said, preferably a furnished house. And I said, really? (laughs) And we met the next day. They can move in and they don't have to buy a knife or a fork or a bed or or a towel or anything. And we can go and have upwards to 18 months to figure out what is going to come after two years because I have no idea. God is in the details. Becky said, we are answers to each other's prayers. Let's be honest, I'm 61 years old. I know that's shocking. I know enough to know that a change was coming for Foothills in the near future. I just didn't think it was coming this summer. I can hardly believe how quickly and delightfully 20 years 
has passed. You have been so good and kind to me and my family. Joyce and I have been overwhelmed many times by your generosity and grace over the years. Our children have been nurtured spiritually and emotionally through this church. I've worked with remarkable people at both the board and staff level. I've grown up as a leader. I've grown closer to Jesus through you and your prayers. I have tons still to learn, but I've been so blessed to be here. I've never had a bad board. A couple of grumpy elders once in a while, but let's not talk about Lawrence Stalder today because, you know, <laughs> that is so not the truth. You'll hear, we have a remarkable group of men and women who serve so carefully and faithfully on our board and on our pastoral staff. And you'll hear from our board chair in just a moment. This church has a great foundation of leaders that will serve well in this season of transition. I deeply believe that the very best days of Foothills Alliance Church are not behind us, but are right in front of us. And as we keep our focus on knowing God and loving each other, reaching our neighbors, serving the world, God is going to do great things in us and through us. I came to meet Jesus because of this church and the camp that we so dearly love out in the Wipers Valley. My walk with Jesus was nurtured in this church as a teenager in the 1970s in our youth group with several of you. So many of you have known me, loved me, tolerated me, prayed for me, and believed in me over these years. I can't find words to say how much I love you all and how grateful I am to God for you all. And my deepest prayer for Foothills, arguably the only prayer I've ever had for Foothills, is that this church will be to you and others what it has been to me throughout my life. A safe place. A kind place. A joyful place. A loving place to try to figure out what it means to follow Jesus and love neighbor. I'm a little uncertain, honestly scared, of what life and leadership in Ontario will look like. But the God who promises to bring perfect peace, he's there too. And I choose to trust him. I choose to take him seriously. And my soul as well. Sad? Yes. <laughs> Quite sad, actually. But well, because he is good. He is kind. He is strong. And his plans are beautiful and perfect, even when they're complicated and confusing. So, Gord, why don't you come? Tell us what's going on. And uh, we're going to sing one of the most beautiful new songs that's been written in years hasn't been written, put to music, and then I'll come back with the last word. Before you leave, I'm really struggling to refrain from asking you to turn the other cheek <laughs> and clocking you again. <laughs> oh. Father filtered, always. Wow. What a special calling for Ian and Joyce. And we can see God's hand all over this. Ian was created to care. He's the pastor's pastor. And they move to that next step in their journey. And, <laughs> wow, what a surprise. What emotion, what questions. <laughs> so I wanna share two things. What's now and what's next? Ecclesiastes shares with us that in everything there is a season. So we're going to both laugh and cry and we're gonna celebrate and mourn and I'm sure if you read those words really carefully, 
you will see party and eat in those words too. So we are all going to find a time that works for Ian and Joyce and family. And we are going to develop a party. And we are going to celebrate. Yeah, we might laugh and then cry. And we'll remember and we'll hug and we'll tell stories. And we will bless Ian and Joyce into their next step. They truly are called. And you know what? So are we. As much as this might seem to be a surprise to us, it is not to the Father. It's been Father filtered. And he has a purpose. So that brings us to the next natural question, what's next? As Ian's mentioned, the Lord has gifted us with strong leadership. And so over the next few weeks, your board is going to put together next steps. And we are going to share that with you frequently. And we're gonna involve you frequently. So as we move forward, there are many words in our head. Excitement is one of them. Mm, maybe with a heavy dose of uncertainty. But again, it's Father filtered and in his kingdom, not confusing. So under the umbrella of our faithful God, we will continue to bless Ian and Joyce and family, and we will praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords always. And we will start now. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the gift of the Triggs over the last two decades. Lord, I thank you for the way that they have nurtured us, that they have cared for us, that they have provided leadership, oh, and the way that they have impacted our lives. There are so many people that are now in your kingdom because you chose to place them with us. And Lord, as we bless them for what is next, your plan's already there. And there are people that they will impact. There are hearts that need them. And you've created them just for this season. And oh Lord, how we are so grateful to you for that. And we are so grateful that you've left us here with your care, your comfort, your direction, your peace and your steps. So Lord, would you place us clearly into your direction? May we listen well and may we continue to follow your voice very clearly. We will thank you for all these things. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen.